Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So welcome to another new video on my YouTube channel. So over the past two months since I arrived in Montreal, I've been discovering a lot of new places. And here I am outside Jean Brion uh, Market. So it's like a farmer's market. They're selling all kinds of fruits and veggies, all local. And the prices are actually very affordable. And these fruits and veggies look very fresh and this is kind of, this is like my new favorite grocery shopping place right now and actually this place opens 24 hours seven days a week that's amazing so we can come here like anytime during their opening season and I also really like the uh, the way that they cut the fruits the larger uh, fruits into smaller pieces to sell it's great for single people so it's um, a very hot and humid day. The heat wave is here in Montreal. So I just went inside McDonald's, got myself uh, a cup of iced coffee to chill, to cool down. And then I moved on outside to the patio. And th it has a really nice view of the market from the distance. And I love this view. I really want to sketch it in my art journal. So I really love how the, uh, the market tent is being surrounded by the greeneries. And here I am. I'm using very simplistic drawing materials, usually just one pen. So right now I'm using a Winsor & Newton fine liner pen, 0 0.8 tip with very bold and solid lines. Right now I'm drawing this lamp um, on the other side of the street. So there is a very important reason of why I started drawing this lamp pole first. Because this is actually the tallest object in this scenery and it's going to act as a ruler for me to measure where the height of the trees are and what's the height of the tent in relationship to this lamp post. So it's very, very important. Okay, so now I'm just drawing those little uh, rectangular shapes, uh, those road signs, traffic lights sticking or hanging around this lamp post. Uh, yeah, a lot of pretty simple big and small rectangular shapes and the bottom of the lamp post. Yeah, tiny little details for the traffic light, green, red, and yellow. And that's pretty much it. Now I'm trying to find the relationship. Okay, now you, as you can see, I'm trying to draw the front side of the tent, which is a triangular, has a triangular top. Yeah. And there's a little bit of detail around the corner, the drapery, and a little bit of accentuation for this lamp pole. I want it to be darker, so it's not going to be merging down with was the tent. It's gonna stand out really well. Yeah, and keep adding the details, the, the flap of the tent, and the long side of the tent on the right. But before that, I wanna add a person very quickly, kind of like from memory. She just walked away in about like five seconds. So this was done from memory. Adding people to a scenery, it really helps to establish the uh, proportions of the buildings or other things. It makes your landscape or cityscape look more interesting with people, okay? So yeah, just work really fast. I wanna try to capture the gestures of those people and not what they really look like. And now moving on a little bit right, and I'm gonna add another man over here. Yeah, people are walking and being busy on in this street scenery. And I know that those people while walking around the sidewalk are their height is a little bit lower than the flap of the tent, as you can see. And yeah, that is so far for those people. I have four people. Now I want to finish the right side of the tent and the middle of the tent on the right is actually covered by another lamp post so I just added the, the sign there up there and keep adding these flaps and adding this traffic sign over here and this little lamp 
traffic lights and just making the pole with solid black ink so it stands out better and not just merging with the tent. So these are actually nice interest points in an urban landscape and adding another person walking beside the man there, finishing the top part and the bottom of the right side. As you can see, it's a long trapezoid. Yeah, tiny little details on the side. And finish the flaps in different sections. And now I'm starting to draw this round dome shape. Okay, it's a really nice thing that kind of, um, it's also like a big central point of interest. Yeah, nice arc. And some railings up there. And writing down the name, John Brion. Yeah, I think it's a walkway over here. So I think it's the uh, starting point of a uh, walkway. And now I want to add another person a little bit bigger than those people around the bottom of the market. This one just um, came from the other side of the street carrying, carrying a shopping bag. And adding some details, those baskets by the entrance. And adding the line of the sidewalk. It really helps with the perspective over here. Really pay attention to where the angle. This angle is pointing up. And the very top of the tent, the line's pointing down, trying to merge into a vanishing point somewhere on the far right hand side, outside the page. I'm going to add another lady, a little bit bigger, closer to me, wearing a backpack, walking to the other side of the street. And now I'm starting to draw the contour of the foliages surrounding the marketplace. And on the very right side of the foliage, there's this heritage red brick building. And yeah, a lot more loose leaves and climbing ivies on this, on this heritage building. Again, using very quick and squiggly lines to suggest the texture of the climbing ivy and a couple of uh, tiny little dots to show the windows. They're being very foreshortened from this angle. keep adding some more very simple lines and details. There's this lamp pole again in the distance, very thin, and it looks shorter because it's in the distance. Starting to sketch out this car over here, driving out from this uh, little alley. Yeah, just a bit of details. The wheel part is very important to show that it looks like a car. And accentuate the lamp post a little bit. There's another car coming behind. It's a pretty busy city streetscape. Some more loose foliages around the right over there. And the brick texture. And the climbing ivy. Some shorter trees around there. Okay, and I think I'm gonna keep the very right hand side very simple because this is not the main subject matter when we're sketching an urban landscape we really find we really need to find the main subject matter the main subject matter in this case is the marketplace so i'm gonna add a lot more details underneath the tent now i just want to finish drawing the outline of the foliages surrounding the tent nice and tall yeah I just drew the outline very quickly from a blind contour approach without looking at the paper very much. And now I'm starting to draw a lot of these vertical lines, those supports of the tent in between, their flower buskets, and also fruits and veggie stalls in between. They're very small because I'm looking at these in the distance, and also a lot of dark areas. 
yeah, lots of abstract lines. Not thinking too much about what I'm really drawing because I really I can't really see clearly. I only see some maybe some green leafy stuff and some really red and vibrant flowers. Yeah, a lot of flower baskets hanging around. Yeah, so now I am gonna spend much more time adding a lot more details for this tent. So these lines on the inside the trapdoor is very important to give three dimension for the slanting slope of the tent on the right. And some more short abstract lines showing the uh, different objects inside the market. A lot of flower basket, some more shopping baskets there and stalls and some more hanging flowers in baskets. More stalls, leafy shapes and dark areas deep inside the space. This really gives more dimension. So hatching this way, it really gives more dimension uh, when we're sketching urban uh, architectural stuff. Yeah, very common technique. And adding another person in the far distance. So I think sketching an urban scenery like this, likeliness doesn't really matter. What you need to do is to capture the energy of the place using these abstract lines. Just fill in the space. Okay, so you're seeing, you have your personal experience, but what you're looking, what you're putting on paper, it doesn't have to be that realistic, as you think, right? We want to leave a lot of um, uh, mental spaces for the viewer to imagine. Being abstract is actually good and adding these lines leading into the street and adding some more foliage on the right side in, in the distance. I think that's pretty much it, but now I want to add more details for these foliages. Yeah, just using squiggly lines here and there, adding some little twigs and branches showing around the bottom. Twigs showing. Yeah, just drawing pretty quickly, kind of from my impression as well, and not trying to copy exactly. So for big masses of trees like these, so just draw as much textures as you can. You don't, of course, you don't have to draw every single leaf that's on these trees. And also try to observe where the, uh, the large branches and twigs are sticking out. So, it's, and so those clusters look more like trees with a little bit of twigs and branches sticking out, showing a little bit. So as you can see, I'm trying to put a lot of focus on the main subject matter, which is the, uh, the tent of the marketplace and all the other um, subject matters around the tent, like the trees and the buildings on the right hand side that could be very loose without too much details. Just so, yeah, you don't, we don't have to draw every single detail in the scenery. You really need to simplify like that. And that's it for the line work. And yeah, so it's getting hotter right now and the shadow is almost moving away from my table area. So yeah, I have to you know, hurry up a little bit, but not rushing. Have a sip of my iced coffee before moving on to watercolor painting. So here's my uh, etcher watercolor painting palette and I've been using it for like an over a year and a half now. Yeah, these paints can actually last for a long time, even though those uh, paint cakes are very small, they can last for a long time. And as always, when doing a landscape or cityscape, I always like to paint the sky area in the very back first, because the sky is always, always in the very back of a landscape. So yeah, just adding a little bit of um, leftover cerulean blue with cobalt blue. So if you have a watercolor palette of 24 or more colors, you're gonna get a lot of uh, different kinds of blues. So for me, I'm actually very open-ended. I don't just use one or two. I like to try out all of those blues in there. And yeah, it doesn't always have to match exactly what's in front of you. The blue can be a little bit sensational. 
the painting is about you know painting your sensations, not just copying like a machine. And I'm just grabbing some yellow ochre, mix it with a little bit medium yellow to paint the first layer of the street. This is the color of the hot sunshine around the concrete areas. I know the street might look like gray to you, but sunshine it still shines on there. And also same for the white tint. The tint is white, but it's not exactly white. Just a little bit of tint from the sunshine. So adding that. First layer for these foliages. Lime green, mix it with a little bit of medium yellow or yellow ochre. Yeah, just play around with different uh, ratios of lime green, yellow ochre, or medium yellow. And using very loose little brush strokes because tree, uh, tree texture is actually very loose anyway. It doesn't have to, to be flat, okay? They're actually very dynamic. And when the wind blows, all the leaves will be moving. So you want to create a sense of movement here with uh, bold, lively brush strokes like these. Yeah, so that's pretty much the first layer for these foliages. As you can see, every single brush stroke can be of a different shape and of a different color, okay? Yeah. And that's pretty much it for the first layer, those warm greens or the lightest tones that I can sense in those trees. So now I'm ready to add the second layer. Because the weather is very hot, the first layer is drying pretty fast. So now I'm kind of like doing uh, wet onto uh, semi, semi wet, okay? So wait for the first layer to dry up a little bit but not completely dried because I still want a little tiny little bit of blending. So this second layer is Viridian Green. Mix it with a little bit of uh, burnt sienna or brown. Just again following my observations to add these patches of shades. Again using tiny little brush strokes right now using my small tip water brush to further create this uh, more realistic texture of leaves. Again, every single brush stroke can be a little bit different and of different brush pressure. And I'm also using uh, the side of the brush by pushing a little sideways in a low angle. So uh, some brush strokes are kind of merging down a little bit and not too predominant. So when we're painting trees, we don't have to make every single brush stroke stand out so sharply, okay? So some brush strokes can be a little dull, can be a little bit toned down. Yeah, so there's a bit of balance and um, it's not too overwhelming for the, look, for the, for the viewers to, to look at, okay? Yeah, and I think it's pretty good for these trees on the left. Now moving on to the right-hand side. Yeah, the same mixing recipe so you can re, uh, you can use any dark shades of green there's reading green there's also probably uh, two or three other dark shades of green in your palette so you can use those greens and mix it with with uh, burnt sienna and a little bit of yellow ochre so really be flexible and play around with what you have you don't have to stick to a recipe from another artist try to explore on your own of how mixing colors works. And always start with the lightest tone and then move on to the mid-tone and the darkest tones. This is how we work with watercolors. Okay, always start light and work, work with layers gradually. And now I'm just punching on tiny little dots of uh, red and rose colors for those flowers hanging right there underneath those flaps of the tent. Yep, tiny little brush strokes of red, rose, or magenta. And also yellow and orange. And so just adding on these tiny dashes of colors inside the market here and there. Some greens for those leaves of veggies or plants. And so again, you don't have to uh, paint inside outlines or paint inside your shapes. Colors can be hanging very loosely outside those little outlines, okay? So you don't have to control too much. 
Yeah, so just adding these dashes of colors pretty bravely. Most of these colors are actually leftover colors from my palette because these areas are actually very tiny. There's no need to grab some of the colors from scratch. Um, there's always I always have leftover greens and blues, sometimes reds, oranges in my mixing area of the palette. Okay, so now just adding a little bit of shadow from the tree onto the top of the tent. And a little bit leftover gray for the flaps and the color the nice green emerald green for the flap around the tent a little bit leftover gray for the bars in the middle yeah and just adding some more medium grays around the tent and now i think i'm going to paint the building on the very right hand side was leftover burnt sienna and raw umber. Painting very loosely, just put the color on. So the textures were already done with pen, uh, with pen work. So yeah, Ooh, it got a little windy. And just painting these signs and the traffic lights. So yeah, red yellow and green okay and that one is yellow and some more again a lot of leftover colors to paint these tiny little areas so we don't have to waste time mixing from scratch again okay so now is the uh, final polish time so we're just trying to add some small intense colors containing more paint pigment and less water as you can see, I'm using these choppy brush strokes to, uh, to accentuate the brick texture for that building a little better. And I'm doing that when the previous layer was dried. And some darker shades, some shadow on that flap on the left. Yeah, tiny little brush strokes, almost invisible. Yeah, some stronger green shade over there, just so... Yeah, those trees are separated with more depths. Yeah, same for this tree. Adding different levels of tones, it really adds more depth to anything that you paint. So not just work with one layer, work with two or three or maybe four layers. And now just adding the leftover gray for the sidewalk areas. This is very watery and the yellow underneath is still showing through. Watercolor is a, transpar it's a transparent medium and we can never completely cover a previous layer. So as you can see, the warm sunshine yellow is still peeking through and we can kind of feel it's a really warm, hot, sunny day in the summer. Yeah, so this is pretty much done. Now I'm just adding these super tiny little brush strokes here and they're almost invisible just like the final polish painting those people and the small objects around the tent with leftover colors mostly yeah painting the outfits of these people and their pants and yeah a little bit for the flower basket here and there that's it all right so here's the look of my finished sketch as you can see, I finished my sketch before the sunshine moves onto the page. So it was, it's going to be really hard to film when the sunshine is shining on top of my page. And with the full heat on me. Yeah, and I feel so satisfied with that before the full heat is here. And so thank you so much for watching my video, everyone. If you like it, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. So I update this channel two times a week with fun adventures in Montreal.